Kevin Camps from Beyond Nuclear describes how nuclear power works and why it's so dangerous. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. As a starting point for people, you know, it's been a long time since nuclear power has been at the top of the national debate. And so there's, there's probably some people listening who literally don't understand what nuclear power is, how fusion reactors work, what the difference is between fusion and fission. Um, you know, uh, you, you want to give us a little primer, a primer on this, uh, you know, in, in, a couple, in, a, in a, a couple of minutes or over a, the course of a couple of sure. minutes? Well, most nuclear power in the world here in the United States and other countries for electricity generation, for example, the fuel is uranium. And specifically, it's a fissile uranium, which is uranium-235. You can split the atoms of uranium. And that's what generates high-level radioactive waste. These are artificial elements, uh, cesium-137 as one example. But the heat given off from the splitting of the uranium-235 atom is what boils the water, that turns the turbine, that generates the electricity. So that's nuclear power. Uh, nuclear weapons... That's a, that's a natural uh, process, isn't it? I mean, those are relatively unstable, uh, the radionuclides, that, 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 what is it called, the actinide... Uh, strip in the in the periodic table. Um, these are these are compounds that are normally giving off uh, protons or in electrons or whatever. They're 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 degrading into um, ultimately they end up as lead, right? I mean, uh, among other things, but that's a normal process, and that's why you have to concentrate uranium so heavily to get enough mass of naturally. Uh, uh, dissolving, <laughs> fissioning, breaking up uh, uh, of uranium that it'll produce heat as a byproduct of that. Do I, do I understand that correctly? Well, um, uranium is a natural element and it is in the Earth's crust. And uh, what's artificial about it, like you said, is the mining of it, the bringing it up to the surface, to the biosphere, the concentrating of it. And then the enrichment of it. So in nature, uranium-235, which is fissile, can be used as an atomic fuel, is less than 1% of uranium in nature. It's 0.7% of uranium in nature. It has to be concentrated or so-called enriched in uranium-235 content. If you go from 0.7% uranium-235 up to 3 to 4%, that's much of the nuclear fuel in the United States, although they've been increasing that percentage of fissile uranium-235 up to higher and higher levels, leaving the fuel in the reactor cores longer. And then on the weapon side of things, it's a similar process. The Manhattan Project is what brought a lot of this into the world, unfortunately, this artificial splitting of atoms. And it was announced at Trinity, New Mexico, at Hiroshima, at Nagasaki, Japan. Again, um, in the case of Hiroshima, the splitting of uranium atoms that uh, vaporized blocks of the city. And then at Nagasaki, the splitting of plutonium atoms that vaporized an entire city, and hundreds of thousands of people were killed. And then you mentioned fusion, which is not the splitting of atoms, but it is the uh, combination of hydrogen atoms to make helium atoms. But yet again, in that artificial union of hydrogen atoms, tremendous amounts of energy are released. And that's how we went from atom bombs to thermonuclear weaponry instead of 15 kilotons, 15,000 tons of dynamite at Hiroshima, 20,000 at Nagasaki, we went to orders of magnitude greater bombs, worse bombs. We're talking now um, megatons of explosive power from fusion. Uh, mega meaning a million tons. Um, and, and that's basically how the sun works, is it not? Isn't the sun just a giant ball of, of hydrogen that is constantly essentially burning. I mean, it's not literally burning because it's not oxidizing, but under great pressure and high temperatures, these, uh, these hydrogen atoms are merging with each other to produce helium, and then those merge with each other to produce all the other elements in the periodic table, and ultimately the stars die and blow up, and that's, you know, where everything you see on this planet came from, right? Everything we see, everything we could see, with the exception of hydrogen, which we can't see, is produced in the death of a star at the end of, of its life as a fusion reactor. Is that right? And the great thing about our solar system is the distance from the sun to the Earth, 92 million miles. It's, it's a fusion reactor in the sky, but it is very far away and makes Earth habitable. So unfortunately, you know, these forces that we're unleashing into our living environment are destructive of life.